Although the vast majority of Meccan pagans rejected the Prophet peace be upon him, a few people outside Mecca embraced Islam. Some of them are mentioned below. Suwaid bin Samit, a poet from Yathrib, the modern-day Medina, Suwaib came to Mecca to perform pilgrimage. When the Prophet peace be upon him invited him to Islam, Suwaid recited some of his own verses to the Prophet peace be upon him. In response, the Prophet peace be upon him recited some verses of the Qur'an, declaring, I have never heard such sublime words. Suwaid embraced Islam. He was killed in the fighting between the Aws and the Hazraj. Ayas bin Mu'ad. He was also from Yathrib and came to Mecca in the 11th year of the Prophet peace be upon him's mission. He was a deputy from the tribe of Aws and came to Mecca seeking assistance against the rival Hazraj tribe. The Prophet peace be upon him invited Ayas to Islam and recited some Quranic verses for him. When Ayaz heard the Prophet peace be upon him recite, he told the other delegation members, By God, this is better than what we have come here for. His fellow tribesman, Abu Husayr, threw pebbles in Ayaz's face and snapped, Leave it, we have come here with a different purpose. The chastened Ayaz fell silent. Upon his return to Yathrib, Ayaz felt seriously ill. His praise and glorification of Allah just before he died left little doubt about his conversion to Islam. Abu Dar Ghifari He had heard about the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him through Suwaid bin Samit and Ayas bin Mu'ad and was interested in knowing more. He sent his brother to Mecca to find out more about the Prophet peace be upon him's character but upon his brother's return from Mecca Abu Dar was not satisfied with his brother's account of the Prophet peace be upon him's message. Accordingly, he decided to go to Mecca himself. Abu Dar reached Mecca, but fearing for his life, he did not ask about the Prophet peace be upon him. At last, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, took him to the Prophet peace be upon him, who then described the tenets of Islam to him. Convinced that what he had heard, Abu Dar became Muslim. His heart, now full of courage and faith, Abu Dar went to the Kaaba to announce that he had embraced Islam. The Quraysh responded by beating him, and only the intervention of Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him's uncle, saved him from being killed. The next day, Abu Dar repeated his announcement at the Kaaba, and once again, Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, had to rescue him from the Quraysh. Abu Dar then returned to his tribe, Banu Ghifar, and left them early when he migrated to Medina with other Muslims. Tufair bin Amr Dawsi He was a prominent poet and a chieftain of the Dawus tribe that lived on the outskirts of Yemen. Eleven years after the Prophet, peace be upon him, began his mission, Tufail visited Mecca only to be warned by the Quraysh about the danger of Muhammad, peace be upon him's bewitching words. Tufail went to the Kaaba with cotton stuffed in his ears as a precaution against the Prophet, peace be upon him's preaching. He arrived at the Kaaba to find the Prophet, peace be upon him, performing his prayers nearby. Overcome by curiosity, Tufel decided to listen to Muhammad, peace be upon him's recitation. I am a poet with a trained ear. I can determine if what Muhammad, peace be upon him, says is true or false. Only if his words are good shall I accept what he says. He was amazed by the Prophet, peace be upon him's recitation. Tufel then followed the Prophet, peace be upon him, home and asked him to explain Islam to him. After the Prophet, peace be upon him, did so, Tufel embraced Islam. He then told the Prophet, peace be upon him, that his people trusted him and would listen to what he had to say and that he would invite them to Islam. He asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give him a sign by which the people would recognize the truth of his words. The Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed to Allah to give him such a sign, and when Tufel went back to his people, his face was radiant. His people were reluctant to accept Islam, but his father and wife readily became Muslim. By the time he migrated to Medina, however, 70 or 80 families from his tribe had accepted Islam, and they accompanied him on the journey to Medina. Dimad Azdi, a skilled exorcist, he hailed from the Azd Shanwa tribe of Yemen. When he came to Mecca, 
he heard a rumor that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was insane. He then approached the Prophet, peace be upon him, and offered to cure him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, responded by saying, All praise be to Allah. We glorify him and seek his help. He whom Allah has guided cannot be misled, and he whom Allah has led astray cannot be guided. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. Zimad was so impressed with the Prophet, peace be upon him, speech that he repeated it thrice and said, I have heard the speeches of sorcerers, soothsayers and poets, but never before have I heard anything like this. He then asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, to extend his hand so that he could pledge his allegiance to him, peace be upon him. Six pilgrims from Yathrib. These six men from the Khazraj tribe of Yathrib were Asad bin Zurara, Of bin Harith bin Rifa, Rafi bin Malik bin Aylan, Qatba bin Amir Hadida, Uqba bin Amir bin Nabi, and Jabir bin Abdullah bin Rigab. They had come along with other pilgrims from Yathrib to Makkah in the 11th year of the Prophet peace be upon him's mission. Yathrib was also home to some Jewish tribes and occasionally disputes would flare up between the Arabs and Jews. The Jewish minority would intimidate the Arabs by saying that soon a prophet would be sent to lead the Jews in battle. The Arabs, they claimed, would be slaughtered like the people of Ad and Iram. These six pilgrims were sitting together in Mina, just outside Makkah one night, when the prophet, peace be upon him, passed by. He approached them and asked, Who are you? We belong to the Khazraj, they answered. Allies of the Jews, the Prophet, peace be upon him, commented. They replied in the affirmative. Let us sit together and talk, the Prophet, peace be upon him, suggested. He spoke to them about Islam, recited some verses of the Qur'an and invited them to believe in Allah, the One, the Exalted. The men sitting with the Prophet, peace be upon him, recognised who he was. This is the same Prophet the Jews constantly threaten us with. Let us pledge allegiance to him before they do. All six men accepted Islam. We left our people in such a plight, they said. If Allah unites us through you, you would be honoured more than anyone else among us. The six new Muslims promised that they would invite their people to Islam upon returning to Yathrib and that they would meet the Prophet, peace be upon him, again during the next pilgrimage. The next year, five of the six men from Yathrib returned to meet the Prophet, peace be upon him, during Hajj. They brought with them five converts from their own tribe and two from the tribe of Aus. The names of the five converts of the Khazraj tribe were Mu'ad bin Harith or Mu'ad bin Ifra, Zakwan bin Abdul Qais, Ubadah bin Samit, Yazid bin Thulba and Abbas bin Ubadah bin Fadla. The two men from the Aus tribe were Abul Haytham bin al Tayhan and Uwaym bin Saida. Again, they met the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Mina, where he taught them more about Islam and asked them to take an oath of allegiance. This was known as the first pledge of Aqaba. Specifically, it was a pact between the men and Allah that they would not associate any partners with Allah, commit theft, fornicate, kill their children, vilify others nor disobey the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he instructed them to do good. Whoever fulfilled this pledge would receive his reward from Allah, and whoever violated any part of it and was proven guilty would be punished in this world as an atonement. If, however, someone broke the pledge and Allah hid his sin from the people, that person would be dealt with by Allah, who would either forgive or punish him. When the men who took the pledge at Aqaba Finished performing Hajj, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sent Mus'ab bin Umair along with them to teach them the Qur'an. In Yathrib, Mus'ab stayed with Abu Umama Asad bin Zurara. The two directed their efforts towards teaching non-Muslims about Islam. One day, as Umair and Abu Umama sat in an orchard, Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, the chieftain of the Aus tribe, spotted them. He said to his cousin, Usaid bin Hudayr, 
Go and rebuke those two who have come to deceive our weak. Weapon in hand, Usaid approached the two Muslims. Asad saw him and warned Musab. Here comes a chieftain. Why are you here? Usaid thundered. Do you intend to deceive our weak? Keep away if you value your life. Musab was not intimidated. Why don't you sit and listen? If you like what we say, accept it. If you dislike it, don't. That sounds fair, said Usaid cautiously. He put away his weapon and sat down. Musab explained the basic principles of Islam and then recited some verses of the Qur'an. Usaid found himself agreeing with everything Musab said, so he embraced Islam. He then returned to Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, who now had to be convinced. I talked to them, Usaid said to Sa'ad carefully, and found nothing objectionable in what they say. Still, I forbade them to talk to anyone else. By the way, I managed to find out that the Bunu Haritha are planning to kill Asad bin Zurara because he is your cousin. They want to break the covenant. Usaid's ploy worked. Saad became angry and made his way to Musab and Asad. Musab told him the same thing he had told Usaid, and Saad agreed to listen. When Musab finished explaining the principles of Islam, Saad too became Muslim. His love for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his faith made him one of the more distinguished companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. His new faith surging in his heart, Saad returned to his people and said, O oh, Banu Abdul Ashal, what do you know about me as a man among you? They answered in one voice, You are our chief and the wisest man among us. Saad said, Well, I will not talk to the families of those who do not believe in Allah and his Prophet, peace be upon him. As a result of this, every man and woman in the tribe became Muslim, except for Usayrum, who became Muslim during the Battle of Uhud. He was martyred in the battle before he had even performed one prostration as a Muslim. Musa bin Umar returned to Makkah before the next Hajj. His account of how Allah had guided the people of Yathrib to Islam delighted the Prophet, peace be upon him, immensely. In the thirteenth year of the Prophet, peace be upon him's mission, many pilgrims from Yathrib made their way to Makkah, Muslims and pagans alike. The Muslims wanted to meet the Prophet, peace be upon him, and invite him over to move to Yathrib. The harassment, abuse and fear that overshadowed the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his followers in Mecca had dismayed the Muslims of Yathrib, who resolved to offer the Prophet, peace be upon him, their loyal protection if he moved there. They arranged a secret meeting with him late one night at Aqaba after the Hajj. To keep their meeting a secret from the Makkan pagans, the 73 Muslims from Yathrib sneaked out to Aqaba, some in pairs, some alone, to make what was to be known as the second pledge of Aqaba. All but 11 were from the Khazraj tribe. Two women were also present, Nasiba bin Kaab from Banu Najjar and Asma bin Amr from Banu Salama. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was accompanied by his uncle, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, who, though not Muslim at the time, was concerned about his nephew's welfare. Abbas began by saying, The Prophet, peace be upon him, has both security and honour in Makkah. If you cannot guarantee to protect him in Yathrib, then let him remain in Makkah. Bara bin Marur, may Allah be pleased with him, spoke for the Muslims of Yathrib. We are determined to offer our loyalty to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and sacrifice ourselves for him, and we are willing to make a covenant to this effect. The Prophet, peace be upon him, recited some verses of the Qur'an and had the men from Yathrib take the following oath. We will worship none but Allah and we will never associate any partner with him. We will obey the Prophet, peace be upon him. We will give our wealth freely in prosperity and in poverty. We will counsel others to do good deeds and instruct them to refrain from evil. We will serve Allah even when others show contempt. We will protect the Prophet, peace be upon him, as we protect our women and children. Additionally, according to Ubada, the Yathrib Muslims also pledged not to disobey those in authority. Bara bin Marur took the Prophet, peace be upon him's hand, and said, I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth, we shall certainly protect you as we do our families. By Allah, 
We are sons of battles, and weapons are our toys. This is what we have inherited from our ancestors. Abu al-Haytam bin Ali Dehan then said, O Prophet, peace be upon him, we are bound to our people by a covenant, and by pledging loyalty to you, we are about to cut off all our old ties. If success comes to you and you should conquer Makkah, will you return to Makkah and leave us defenceless? The Prophet, peace be upon him, smiled and said, No, blood is blood and destruction is destruction. I am of you and you are of me. I will wage war against those who make war upon you and be at peace with those who are at peace with you. You all know what you are agreeing to, Abbas warned. All of you are pledging to go to war. So what will you do if you lose all your wealth and property and all your leaders are killed? Will you abandon the Prophet, peace be upon him? If so, let him stay in Mecca, because if you forsake him, it will be a disgrace in this world and the next. However, if you stand by him, even in the face of destruction, you will find a reward in this world and the next. The Yathrib Muslims listened to Abbas and then vowed that they would support the Prophet, peace be upon him, no matter how great the risks involved. Someone then asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, Tell me, O Prophet, peace be upon him, what will we get in exchange for all this? Paradise, the Prophet, peace be upon him, replied simply. Give us your hand, the people said. Asad bin Zurara then took the Prophet, peace be upon him's hand in his and addressed the gathering. O people of Yathrib, after a long journey, we have found the Prophet of God. Taking his hand means incurring the enmity of all the Arabs, the deaths of our chiefs in his defence and the clash of swords. If you are prepared for this, take the Prophet, peace be upon him's hand, and with Allah lies the reward. If, however, you have any reservations, forsake him now. Unswerving in their faith, the assembly cried out, Remove your hand, Asad. We are ready to clasp the Prophet, peace be upon him's hand. Some sources indicate that Asad bin Zurara was the first to take the oath, while others name Abul Haytham bin al Dehan and Bara bin Marur as the first. The two women present took the oath without shaking hands. After everyone had taken the oath of allegiance, the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the people to select 12 men who would be responsible for the affairs of the community. Nine members of the Husraj tribe were chosen, along with three from the Aus tribe. The nine Husraj chiefs were Saad bin Ubada bin Dalim, Asad bin Zurara bin Uds, Saad bin Rabia bin Amr, Abdullah bin Rahawa bin Tulba, Rafi bin Malik bin Ajlan, Bara bin Marur bin Sakhar, Abdullah bin Amr bin Haram, Ubada bin Samit bin Qais, and Mundir bin Amr bin Khanis. The three chiefs from the Aus tribe were Usaid bin Haider bin Samak, Saad bin Khatima bin Kharith, and Rifa bin Abdul Mundir bin Zubair. After these twelve were elected, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to them, You are like the apostles of Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. You are responsible for the community in Yathrib, while I am the caretaker of the entire body of Muslims. Just as the people were about to disperse, a strange voice was heard calling out, O men of the camp, will you not deal with Muhammad, peace be upon him? Right now, disbelief has prevailed, and he and his followers are preparing to fight you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, knew that it was a demon speaking. He called back, O enemy of Allah, soon I will deal with you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then told the Muslims to return quietly to their beds as day was about to break. The next morning, the Quraysh, having heard a rumour about the pledge at Aqaba, went to the Yathrib camp to protest against what had happened. They resented their visitors' patronage of someone they deemed to be an outcast and voiced their displeasure about any contact between the contingent from Yathrib and the Prophet, peace be upon him. The polytheists of Yathrib, who knew nothing about the event, insisted Nothing had taken place, while the Muslims kept silent. The Quraysh reluctantly 
accepted the polytheist's reassurances and returned home. Later, however, the Quraysh found out that the rumour was in fact true. Infuriated, they sent their horsemen to apprehend any who took part in the pledge, and at Adhaga they captured Saad bin Ubada and Mundir bin Amr. While Mundir bin Amr managed to escape, Saad was bound and taken to Mecca. The Muslims from Yathrib planned to raid Mecca in order to free their brother Muslim. Before they could carry out their plans, however, Saad was freed by two Meccans, Mutim bin Adai and Harith bin Harb, whose caravans Saad protected in Yathrib. Saad rejoined the others and they all returned home safely.